Hey everybody, it's uh, Brian here. I uh, just wanted to continue where I left off from a few months ago. Uh, I did a demo uh, a few months ago, basically how to um, run Interactive Brokers TWS on Ubuntu Linux with the Java GPI. Well, uh, I'm continuing along as I progress with this two months later. Um, I am now using, everything's pretty well the same. Uh, if you want to know where I uh, get left off, go through, follow these instructions, and follow this video, okay? It's very easy to do. It takes about no more than 15, 20 minutes if you know Linux and Java and how to set up uh, your IDE like in, uh, NetBeans that I'm using currently. <coughs> so, leaving where we uh, left off, um, let me just make sure you, you have your API, uh, IB API loaded in your environment for Linux. I'm using Ubuntu. Uh, also, um, just trying to think here of any other quick stuff. Of course, um, there is the uh, PDF. Let me just find it here somewhere in this uh, mess. But uh, there is a PDF that will help guide you through um, this, uh, um, let me just pull up my uh, other one here. If you come under um, right here, this PDF is really critical to get you up and running. Now, um, when you go into your uh, into your um, NetBeans, so I've got everything all set up. Okay. Now, uh, my last video, I showed you a specific client that to run it. I'm now using a different one, uh, which is actually more useful because it showcases a lot of the features of uh, the Interactive Brokers TWS functionality. Um, this one can be found under uh, Test Java Client, um, and uh, you'll find this main client here. So you got to make sure that you set up your um, your run uh, as you typically do uh, I'm always using different software so it's always a a pain to work with um, let's see uh, no we want to go up here okay um, so we're, we're using the sample code uh, if you come under run here, you'll notice I've got, um, actually no, it's not true. <laughs> Alright, so you come under source file, uh, this is under, as you can see here, samples Java, and then you have test Java client, and then you have a main class right here. So you want to run that individually. Uh, I can build everything, as you can see, build successfully. Um, but you want to run this as a separate uh, program, I guess. Um, and what will happen is you got to make sure you have your uh, TWS running in the background, as you can see here. Uh, a couple things I want you to pay attention to that uh, I, even Ivan mentioned in his uh, set of videos with me. Uh, you need to ensure, as usual, under configuration, you enable the ActiveX and socket clients. Uh, my case, I'm only allowing the uh, connections from the local host only. The big one that you need to be aware of, you, you can you can do read only API, but if you have, this is by default clicked on. So if you want to send over uh, orders, it'll tell you to uh, unclick this. All right, so knowing that, TWS is running, uh, and uh, let's play around. Okay, so we're going to connect. And uh, you can leave this blank for localhost. So you can see everything's connected here. Um, and this is a really good uh, interface to have for data execution, especially for market and historical data. I might use this uh, as my client co uh, into the TWS. So I'll have this sitting in parallel with my TWS. Uh, let me let me just finish up what I'm going to do and I'm going to tell you what I'm planning to do. So we've connected. We can disconnect. Uh, hopefully, uh, see so yeah. 
Okay, so we've now reconnected. Okay, so I can request uh, market data, let's say Apple. Uh, no, so we, I think we got to do this. I haven't really worked through this in a while. Okay, so we got Apple. So here's getting some historical data from of Apple. Okay, so that's all good. Um, we can uh, subscribe to data, I believe. Um, let's cancel that historical data. Okay, so um, let me see here. Let's run a market scanner of something. Just leave it as is. Subscribe. So it, it obviously goes by pretty fast, but the point is that uh, you would usually have a, a program that stuff this into a message queue, right? So uh, we can um, cancel whatever we want, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's do some orders. Uh, we're going to place an order. Um, I'm going to place an order. Let me just clear this here. Uh, cancel. I'm going to cancel that order. Okay, so hopefully that gets canceled. Uh, well, let me just try a different uh, symbol. I might be. I might, yeah, well, it got canceled. Anyways, um, let me just do IBM, let's say. So we're just, we're just testing connectivity of this. So here's the buy signal for IBM. Um, so off it goes. You can see it's all automated, right? Um, and then we can override the cancel within the TWS itself here, which is quite good. Um, so all the uh, basic uh, functionalities working, uh, data, as well as um, our uh, orders. Okay, so where does that leave us? This is a big deal, as you can tell. This is all done in Java. Um, as you can tell here within my NetBeans. So, knowing what we know, um, this is kind of important. Uh, okay, so what we can do now is I can set up a client very similar to this uh, in, uh, from, from Interactive Brokers. I'll probably take out these buttons and have my model or my co-generated model from MATLAB connect into this. So I've demoed buy signals and sell signals, um, but you know, the model also needs to be able to communicate with the data for the inflow as well. So I've got to develop that. So because this application here, the sample application is done in Java, um, how do we, how do we um, build that communication between this application that will do the execution, the data um, capture uh, for market data, um, and uh, we're going to use, uh, I've shown many demos of this is using Redis. Uh, so we can set up a Redis server, I've shown that, uh, have this uh, program push data into the, um, into the uh, queue of Redis. And at the other end, you have your C program that will then um, get the data, as you can see here, the, the market data, process it with the algorithm that I provide. So in my case, I'll test out, let's say, the um, uh, that here in Super Trader I showed using the Simulink and then co-generate that to C. And then from there, uh, because it's, I'll be able to send data into it via Redis, uh, have that algorithm uh, process this data uh, if it sees anything it likes, basically the super uh, here in Super Trader, as is just really is just a Bollinger uh, set of bands, and if it hits certain uh, triggers like a standard deviation of two or something like that, <coughs> then you'll just trigger a sale or sorry a, a buy. The other difficult part is being able to manage the uh, orders. Now um, I got to figure out how far along do I want to push that demo code. Um, uh, you know, connecting using the market data from here in Interactive Brokers as well as the um, buy and sell signals coming from the same um, co-generated uh, MATLAB or Simulate model. So we're getting closer. Um, we've done this completely no problem in uh, Windows using .NET and uh, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy to see where I'm at. 
um, and uh, not using the previous application in that video I've shown you uh, in here, this video here, that application I'm not a fan of. This is the preferred application you want because like I said it has all the different types of orders and so on and so forth. So all in all um, it looks good and um, we're, we're in good good uh, making good progress so uh, hopefully I'll have another video sooner or later uh, showcasing maybe pushing this data uh, into Redis and then having the Redis on the other end of the model the co-generated a uh, simulate model process it and send back uh, signals to buy and sell just basic connectivity that's all we're really testing for right now over and out hopefully you like it talk to you later